Little Anna grows up hearing the tale of wildlings from her father. They are hairy creatures with long, sharp teeth and nails that mercilessly devour children. Her father claims that the only way to keep her safe from those wildlings is to lock her within the confine of the four walls. So without letting her father know, Anna would climb up to the small window and see the limited view outside and hear the crow cawing. One time, Anna makes an attempt to escape from the confinement, but it only results in her getting a shock from the doorknob. Nevertheless, her father loves her dearly. He teaches her to read and would regularly check her health and even brings her a cake on her birthday. On one birthday, Anna's father brings her a hamster named Dusty as a present, and soon, it becomes her only companion, with whom she would look into the outside world through the window pane. However, even this furry companion could not last forever because after some time, it passed away. But to console her, Anna's father tells her that Dusty is in a better place. One morning, Anna wakes up from a nightmare of wildlings feasting on a little child. The very same day, she gets her first period, but she lacks knowledge about it being a natural process. When Anna asks her father what has happened to her, he simply tells her that she is sick. From that day onward, her father pricks her with an injection in her stomach. As time passes by, Anna grows into a beautiful teenager. However, her stomach preserves the evidence of the suffering that she has to go through every single day. And as a side effect of that unknown chemical, her health deteriorates to the point that she one day begs her father to send her to the better place. Her father becomes heartbroken by Anna's plea, and after a few minutes, with eyes full of tears, he returns back to Anna's room and points a gun at her. However, he couldn't bring himself to pull the trigger to kill his daughter. He then sits beside her and tells her to close her eyes to sleep. Right next second, he put the gun into his mouth and shoots himself. And as her father's blood splatters all over her, Anna passes out in shock. When Anna opens her eyes, she finds herself in a hospital bed. This is the first time she has ever been out of the room where she was being held captive for years and also the first time she has ever encountered other human beings besides her father. So, Anna immediately rushes to the rooftop and feels the warm sun rays on her body. Once she gets caught by the staff, Anna is brought back to her room, and this time, they tie the girl to the bed. When she opens her eyes, there is a lady sheriff named Ellen Cooper by her bed. Ellen introduces herself to Anna and lets her know that she is the one who brought her to the hospital. Just then, the doctor calls Ellen out of the room and reveals that a high concentration of lupropellin is found in Anna's system. Lupropellin is usually used to treat endometriosis or paraphilia, but the thing is, Anna's got none of those conditions. And since there is no evidence of Anna menstruating, the doctor suspects that the drug is used to slow down her maturity. After returning to the room, Ellen undoes the straps and takes her to see her father in the other hospital room. The next morning, the chief doctor comes and suggests Anna be put in a special therapeutic program, but Ellen opposes the idea of locking this poor girl up yet again. While the sheriff and doctor are in the middle of the discussion, Anna voices her opinion to go with Ellen. So, Anna becomes Ellen's responsibility until the DNA result of her and her father is out. On the way to Ellen's house, a certain group of people has their eyes on Anna, and one of them being a mysterious man wearing a wolf pelt. Ellen introduces Anna to her brother, Ray, who lives with her. She even prepares a room for Anna to sleep in. Before Ellen walks out of the room, Anna asks her to close the window in fear of the wildling. Anna elaborates that the wildlings are out to eat the children. Listening to her, Ellen assures her that there is no such thing as wildlings, and that she is completely safe in this house. However, Anna couldn't trust her words, so she closes the window after Ellen is gone. That night, Ellen makes a trip to the house Anna was held captive. She goes to Anna's room and sees the drawing of a hairy creature eating a girl. The next morning, Ellen finds Anna sleeping in the closet, and in the following days, Ray becomes Anna's companion. He takes her to the grocery shopping and shares his food with her. And after living under normal conditions, Anna's period resumes. Ellen brings her a box of tampons and Anna misunderstands it for the medicine. 
With utmost patience, Ellen explains that she is not sick for bleeding down there, rather, she is simply maturing into a woman. While Anna lives with them, Ellen allows her to roam around freely. Anna frequently goes to the library and studies by herself while Ray attends classes. However, due to her habit of not wearing the shoes, she has become the talk of the town among a few students. We learn that Ray is also somewhat of an outcast student who is bullied by Lawrence and his friends. Seeing Ray with Anna, Lawrence does not let go of the chance to demonstrate his power, but they did not expect Anna to stand up for Ray. However, Ray is not happy with Anna helping him out, thinking this might get him in more trouble. One afternoon, Anna sees a deer and follows it deeper into the woods. There, she meets the wolfman with a wolf pelt, who saves her from a booby trap set for animals. Back home, Ellen reveals that the DNA result is out and that Gabrielle Hansen is the man who Anna thinks is her father, is not her biological father. That night, Ray takes Anna to Jen's party. Anna's dressed up in a beautiful yellow dress that Ellen has bought for her. This is the first time Anna has seen people her age enjoying a social gathering. The music is a little too loud for Anna, so she grabs Ray's hand and covers her own ears. All thanks to a fruit punch kicking in, and the romantic atmosphere leads them to share a kiss, until blood starts coming out of Anna's mouth. Immediately, Anna rushes to the washroom and spits out a loose tooth from her mouth, and she takes a second tooth as well. Ray keeps knocking on the door, telling her that he would take her back home, but Anna gets scared and escapes through the window. Meanwhile, all this time, Lawrence has been keeping his eyes on them. As she makes her way through the woods, a shadow keeps on luring behind her, and at one point, Anna hears the growling and snarling noise behind her as a hairy creature begins ripping her dress. She imagines that the one assaulting her is none other than Wildling, so she gnaws at its neck. But what falls on the ground is Lawrence, bleeding profusely from the wound on his neck. Scared out of her mind, Anna rushes deeper into the woods and finally arrives at her old house. She spends the night in her own bed, but she could not fall asleep as the image of battered Lawrence keeps flashing in her mind. The next morning, Anna takes a bath and changes into her father's old clothes and returns back to Ellen's house. Ellen offers her breakfast and shows concern about Anna's sudden disappearance. She asks the girl about her dress and what had happened the previous night. Just then, a fellow sheriff named Roger knocks on Ellen's front door. He tells Ellen that Lawrence has been missing since yesterday's party, so he wishes to ask Anna if she knows anything about his disappearance. But Ellen tells him to let her handle things with Anna. Meanwhile, Anna is not only starting to lose her teeth, but also her fingernails start blackening. So when Ellen returns inside and sees Anna painting her nail red, not responding to her question, Ellen gets angry with her. Hearing the commotion, Ray comes in and offers his help to make Anna talk. Once they are alone, Ray tells Anna that he wouldn't tell his sister anything about the blood from the previous night and convinces her to show him her mouth. When Ray sees her disfigured teeth, he yells at his sister that they need to take Anna to the hospital immediately. Anna takes the chance to run off from there. At night, she reaches the wolfman's lair. He offers her some meat and approaches her. To confirm his suspicion, he checks her fingernails and her teeth. Once he confirms, he tells Anna that he has not seen one of her kind in 16 long years. She does not quite understand what the wolfman is thinking, but then he hands over a torch and points to a cave on the hill, asking if Anna wants to know where her mother is. When Anna arrives at the inner part of the cave, she finds a skull with long, sharp teeth and a hole in its forehead. Holding that skull, Anna has a flashback of the time when Gabrielle shot her mother but spares her life. He holds her in his arm and takes her back home. The same night, Anna goes to see Gabriel at the hospital, and now he has regained his consciousness, but she does not interact with him and sprints back to Ellen's house instead. Back home, Ellen is busy looking at the photographs of Lawrence at the crime scene. She sees the yellow dress lying beside Lawrence's body and recognizes it as the same dress that she has bought for Anna. And as soon as Anna comes back and hugs her, Ellen notices Anna's long, filthy fingernails. Based on the evidence, 
Ellen could not neglect her duties, so she arrests Anna and brings her to the station. That night, with the help of Roger, Gabriel pays Anna a visit to the station. He tries to make Anna inject a drug into her stomach. She asks why he has hidden the fact that she is a wildling herself and drops the injection. When asked why he spared her life, Gabriel replies by saying that Anna is a mistake and so is her father, and then calmly walks out of the station. The next morning when Ellen comes to check on her, Anna tricks her and escapes from the station. She sees Ray in the police car outside the station and tells him to drive her away. Initially, Ray is reluctant to do so, however, he does as she tells him. Midway, they abandon the car and proceed to walk into the woods. That night by the river, these two young blood find warmth in each other and Anna ends up losing her virginity to Ray. On the other hand, Gabriel plans to get back Anna and hold her captive. He threatens Roger to gather his hunter men, and soon enough, early next morning, Gabriel and the men corner them in the wood. During the chase, Ray sustains a gunshot in his arm. He tells Anna that they should find the car and go find Ellen. But Anna has no intention of going back, as she has passed the point of no return. Therefore, Ray returns back alone and finds Ellen. However, even after many months, Gabrielle and the men have not given up on hunting down Anna, and in order to survive in the woods, Anna adapts to camouflage. One day, Ray sees Roger filling jerry cans with gasoline and loading them in his pickup car. He immediately informs about this to his sister, Ellen. When the men return to the woods, Anna begins hunting the men one by one. By then, Anna has successfully transformed into a wildling. And the same day, Ellen also arrives in the woods. When Roger tries to stop Ellen, Anna comes to her rescue and kills the man in cold blood. And before fleeing, Anna shows her enlarging belly to Ellen. That night, Gabriel and the others set the forest on fire and smoke begins suffocating Anna. To save the life growing in her womb, she gathers every ounce of energy and begins digging in the ground. Luckily, the burrow gets connected to an underground cave. She then frees herself from the constraints of her clothes and reveals her true form. Unfortunately, her sigh of relief couldn't last long as Gabrielle hits her with a tranquilizer. And as a result, Anna starts to lose control over her body. When Anna lies on the cold ground, Gabrielle slits her stomach, hoping to take the baby out. He tells her that if the child is a girl, he would name her Anna. However, the incision helps to wear off the effect of the sedative and energy drifts back to Anna's body. She instinctively grabs the nearby torch and yanks it toward Gabriel. Finding an opening, she attacks him and gnaws his neck. Gabriel has always been a father figure to her, but now that she had to kill him in order to save her own offspring, Anna growls aggressively and passes out. When Anna regains her senses, the wolfman has already sewn up the slit on her stomach, ensuring that the child is safe and sound. After a few days when Ellen and Ray return back to search for Anna in the forest, the girl reveals herself from a distance and disappears into the surrounding immediately. And after that, Anna travels all the way to the north with her baby to look at the northern light, which was one of her dreams. Please, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.